Mining job hunt video. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters and in today's video we are going to be collecting jobs for the sponsors mining jobs to apply for page. So these are all the jobs that we think you should be applying for once you've finished either the intro to underground mining, the DIY or their work ready packages. So let's go over and type underground into seek and have a look. So you first up you'll notice that there's a few less jobs than normal and you normally get that towards the end of February because snatch it season they have a lot of resumes that come through which gives them a lot of choice which um, means that they don't advertise for quite as many new starter jobs just for a small period at the end of February. It doesn't mean that they're not looking so you still should have um, be putting in for everything that comes up and also be putting in for the jobs that ask for experience still especially if you've done the sponsors training because they just want people that know how their mind works that they can throw in the deep end today we're going to have a chat about what you can write off against tax because i've had a few questions about that and i also just want to um, put out my commiserations to the two guys that got killed in Queensland and their families uh, from everything that I've looked at and read it looks like it is a um, tragic accident where uh, they've somebody along the way has gotten confused between a paste fill stope and a backfill stope and have allowed it to be bogged out from underneath the mines departments in Queensland They've put out a couple of notices to, to basically tell everybody to inspect all their backfilled stopes and make sure everybody knows what and audit their stopes. With that, I think what they're trying to, what they're getting everybody to do is to make sure that they know the difference between their backfill stopes and their pastefill stopes. So that's really important. But when the inquiry, when they um, do a proper inquiry and they release a bit more information, I'm more than happy to have a little bit of a chat about it on the channel because I know a lot of people are interested in what happened up there. But yeah, from my take on it, just from what I've seen at the moment, it really does look like a terrible, tragic accident that, um, yeah, that the guys um, had nothing to do with. It was just terrible circumstance. But there's a few jobs around by the looks of things and um, yeah there's a fair bit around that you can apply for it's never nice when something like that happens in the industry but it has become a lot safer since I first started many many years ago and you know every incident that we have it's investigated and it adds to the safety of it all Jumbo operator, charge up operator, diesel fitters, shot crate suppliers, charge up operators, charge up operators. A lot of charge up, op a lot of mid tier jobs going at the moment because everything settled down after the big move over Christmas. So they've worked out who they can promote and who they can't. And those that don't have anybody with any real talent underneath that they feel that they can promote are looking to try and get people in. So what everybody's doing at the moment is that they're all trying to poach from each other. And the way that you poach other people's workers is that you offer them better conditions like two and two or you up their money. And a lot of them are doing that. Not only are they raising the money, but they're also putting um, people into those rosters that are two and two, which are really popular at the moment. Race board off -sider. Services, entry level offside, surface, we'll grab that, we haven't grabbed this for a while. Underground fitter. Shot Creek Operator, Winder Driver Tatamite, putting a new shaft in down there, by the looks of things, Operator Glencore. 
Oh, it's uh, copper smelter operators. Okay, so we'll put that in our mill jobs. So if you don't want to go underground or into the pit, then there are good jobs in the mills like that going around that you can apply to. Drill is a soft side of Swick in Tasmania. So there's a lot of stuff happening in Tasmania at the moment, basically because they've got all these mines that are reopening that were hard rock underground. So whenever your mine reopens, they always need the diamond drillers going so you can see what's underneath you, so you can make a plan. I got told back in the day that while the diamond drillers are on site drilling, everything's sweet. The time to worry about whether your mine's got any more time left or not is when they get the, they get the diamond drillers to pack up and leave and they're not doing any drilling. That's when you should be worried. And I've seen it happen in a few places, so yeah, it works out real like that. So we'll grab that greater driver job, greater operator job. Still a few jobs around, not quite as many, but you'll see them come back with a bit of a rush by the end of February again. So the, the big thing is to be ready for it. There's no use seeing the job and then going, oh, I want to prepare myself for it because I'm going to apply for that job. You need to be ready for it out front. The grad jobs will start to come up too soon as well for the middle of the year. Leading hand, surface diamond driller, underground shift electrician, drills off side of South Australia, switch. So same company as before, different location. At the ground drill fitter. Surface diamond driller, underground fitter, shot firer, production engineer, training advisor, Brisbane, all rounder. Okay, so with the tax, with people um, there's not a real lot that you can claim uh, you can claim if you've got to go um, from work to any special events and you're using your own car or anything like that you can claim that that sort of stuff but you can't claim um, a lot of it and just be really careful because back in the day there was tea tree oil that went round fortunately I didn't sign up for it but I had a fair few mates that did and most of them ended up owing the um, yeah owing the tax man you know hundreds of thousands of dollars unfortunately because they ended up changing the ruling on it and it went to court and it's played out over years and years and years and some of the guys that I know are just paying the bill off now and you know the thing sort of happened 10 15 years ago so just be aware that you know with your tax minimization make sure that the person that you're going to it's a real um you know thing like depreciating a rental house or you know shares that you've got that you've uh, that you've um, borrowed money on just all the normal ways of bringing your tax down is fine it's when you start getting out and buying into these schemes that a lot of people target the miners for because you've got the the miners have got the the tax to play with so they really do target our area of the industry so just be careful of those um those schemes because unfortunately you know in the past a lot of people have signed up for them and then the ta ato has ruled against it because you've got to look 
from what I understood at the time, you needed the ATO needed only had a temporary ruling in. You need a full ruling in. If the scheme that you're signing up for has only got a temporary ruling in, then you're probably leaving yourself open to a world of hurt. Apart from that, you know you can um, tax deduction of a watch, safety glasses, you know the boots, anything that you change and swap out in uniform that you pay for yourself, you can write that off. But apart from that, normally there's a, um, a remote working allowance. Sometimes that's been phased out in some of the areas that it used to be in. It just depends. So um, what I would recommend that you do is go and get yourself a reasonable accountant and see what they have to say about it all and be guided by them. Because, um, yeah, a lot of people, they try and jump into some tax schemes and tax minimisation schemes and end up getting burnt. Unfortunately, over the journey, I've seen a lot of people get burnt in that sort of stuff. So I hope that answers your question. It's probably not what you were more aiming at um, with the allowable deductions, but it's pretty much standard like a normal job. There's nothing nothing really out of the ordinary that you can throw in. A lot of people try and throw in their travel if they travel across the country, and you can't do that. Um, the only way you can get that tax deducted is if your company will allow you to salary sacrifice it, and a lot of companies do. So it's one of those things where uh, you can... Um, Oh, meet the leaders. We'll have a go at that. Meet the leaders, Barmy. Okay. Okay. The 8th of March. An open day. So that we'll put up there. So they can have a look at that. Seems pretty reasonable. But yeah, like I was saying, you can. there's not a lot that you can deduct. It's... Um, it's just the standard stuff, but if you get your co company to salary sacrifice your flights, then you can take it off your um, off your salary. The other thing that you can do as well, there's Swick again for jobs in Western Australia, so they're really looking, ramping up for their offsiders. The other thing that you can do is um, if you get the company that will salary sacrifice and you move to a regional town, you can actually salary sacrifice your mortgage. And we did that with uh, Barrick back in the day in Kalgoorlie. We salary sacrificed the house and the car and the power and the water and all that sort of stuff. And it was really good. It um, brought my wages down completely, which was great. Um, so yeah, you can do those sort of things, but you've got to be living in a regional town and you've got to have an employer that's opening, open to doing that because there is a fair bit of um, paperwork that they have to do um, to make it all happen with the tax department. But most of the, um, the companies, they more than are happy to do that because they see it as a way of retaining people like we were talking about before with the poaching, offering better conditions better wages they can offer salary sacrifice which is really good draws off signer it's a surface one so you can see there's a lot of offsider roles around at the moment so they must have run through theirs already that they got in for january and they're having to ramp up at the ordering All right, I think we'll call it quits after this one. Like I said, there were a lot of us cider jobs around on the surface as well as underground. So that could be a way of going forward for you. We'll try one more just in case. Open pit trainee truck driver as well. It was worth doing one more. Like I keep saying to people, the only place that you that I really come across the traineeships or the, the surface traineeships at the moment that are paying any decent money are in around the mining town, so like Kalgoorlie or Mount Isa. Um, yeah, so you really need to think about relocating to those places if you want to get yourself a surface traineeship. A lot of people are looking at what's going on in iron ore and they are 
you know, that they're turning all their minds driverless and the structure of the people that they're getting in, or the structure that they're using to get people in is on less money than you would be if you're on a mine site. So I'm going to talk about that in another video and I'll use a couple of examples. But yeah, it's... I don't know about you, but I got into mining to make sure that I was going to make a lot of money. And if you're only going to make $80,000 a year, what's the point? You might as well be doing something else in Perth or in the capital city that you're in. So anyway, that is that. Um, let's have a look at the mining prices. So these are the metal prices that we use um, every week. And you can see gold's down a little bit. It's down at two hundred and uh, two thousand six hundred and seventy nine dollars an ounce uh, copper has dropped a little bit it's below thirteen thousand a ton but it's still nice and close and nickels come off the boil a little bit by a couple of thousand dollars to thirty seven thousand dollars a ton but still at those prices everybody's making a real lot of money so let's go over and have a look at our map oh sorry first we'll have a look at our coal price it's um one hundred and thirty six dollars and fifty cents and you can see what's going on with coal price as everybody around the world is opening up those mines that are right next to their coal fired power plants so it's one of those things that if it goes much lower there's going to be a lot of mines around the country that become a bit iffy so if you're looking to get into the industry i'd be concentrating on hard rock instead of coal because with the hard rock you're going to get a long-term career out of it and these are all the mines around the country that are producing gold and all the metals that are going into batteries. So there's a lot of opportunity down here in the last six weeks. There's been a lot of opportunity down here in Tasmania, a lot in the middle of New South Wales, up here that's fly and fly out of Brisbane and Townsville, uh, around Charters Towers and Mount Isa. There's been a bucket load of work around in um, South Australia for all the um, Oz mineral sites, as well as BHP's Olympic Dam. They go through a fair, people, a fair few people at Olympic Dam, so it's a good idea to prepare yourself before you go up up there northern territory's got tanamide which is a huge underground gold mine they're always looking for people ruck are looking for people up there because they're doing a shaft sinking operation savannas is in and out of the northern territory as well which is a big nickel mine and you've also got all the mines here in wa that are either fly and fly out of perth or around kalgoorlie and like i keep telling everybody if you really want a job then the best thing to do is check out the sponsors intro to underground mining package it's $495. It teaches you how the mine works from top to bottom. It gives you all the information that the employer wants you to know. And in the back of the Australian Mining Seminar, there's full instructions on how to redo your resume, interview prep, all that sort of wonderful stuff. If you want some more help, then you can check out the Work Ready package. In that one, you get one of the shift bosses to give you a hand to understand the mining information once you've done the online training. They redo your resume, interview prep, and come up with a plan of where and how you're going to try and get in. But the best course of action I tell people to do anyway is to head straight for one of the big mining towns. Mining towns like Mount Isa and Kalgoorlie are the best place to get your start. And normally... The way I tell people to work it is that make your plan to go, organise where you're going to stay, either in a backpackers or in the caravan park just to start with, just to launch yourself. A lot of them have got single person's accommodation as well that you can stay at in the caravan parks. Uh, but yeah, send your resume over to all these jobs a couple of weeks before you get there with the email saying I'm coming. Normally you'll get a response saying that's great, I'll see you when you get here. And then they really want people standing in front of them. If you are standing in front of them, then your chances of getting a job goes through the roof. But just make sure that you've got your mining knowledge up to speed before you go because there's just as many people hitting Kalgoorlie or sorry, there's just as many people leaving Kalgoorlie as there are hitting Kalgoorlie because, you know, they people come, they last five minutes in the job and and then they have to go because they can't stay and it's just yeah it is what it is so with everything that we do with this channel it's all about bringing you up to speed so you get prepared for getting into the mining industry and the jobs that we're trying to get you into are going to lead you into a long-term career that are going to go it's going to go for 10 15 20 years so I hope that job inf uh, that that um, information's helpful, and if you could uh, share this information around and like and subscribe the channel, that would be wonderful. Thanks.